hearts this morning.
Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And it, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Serenius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was at the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, 
who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Today, we are surrounded by scenes of the nativity to the extent that it's easy to overlook the significance of its details. Mary and Joseph hailed from Galilee, a region far removed from Jerusalem, the heart of the Israeli nation. Galilee was remarkable for being an unremarkable hodgepodge of people, and the place was often mocked by other Jews. But God had a perfect plan and purpose. We read about Mary and Joseph leaving the familiarity of their homeland to travel to Bethlehem for the census. When they arrived, the city was packed and there was no room for the expectant mother. Out of pure necessity, Joseph found refuge in the poorest of lodgings, a place where animals eat. While our modern imagery features a manger as a crib-like piece of furniture lined with soft hay, Historically, this feeding trough shared more in common with the kitchen sink. Food scraps and feed were dumped into a basin formed from rough-hewn stone. How fitting it is that Mary laid her baby in the place where livestock come to eat. And Jesus is the one we turn to so that we may be fed. Luke continues the story in verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Angels proclaimed the good news to these lowly servants, the shepherds, who were considered the poorest members of society. According to his will, God chose not to come to the mighty, but to reach down and shower love on the meek. Bethlehem, the city of his birth, in Hebrew means house of bread, and Jesus is the bread of life to the spiritually hungry. This is the essence of the upside-down kingdom that Jesus preaches a kingdom where expectations are overturned and the lowly are exalted. His birth was miraculous, and yet it was surrounded by animal filth. He was surrounded by the common, yet proclaimed in the heavens and crowned with undeniable beauty. Jesus emerged from this unexpected background and shows us that God can do the miraculous with the most humble of people and the most unlikely of circumstances.
there's something about that name. And the truth is, is that there is something about that name. When that name is called over you, that name has the authority to wipe away every sin that's ever been committed. And when that name is called over you, it translates you from slavery to death to life in Jesus Christ. North Cities, there is something about that name. It is powerful. It is life-giving. It frees you. It sustains you. It keeps you. There is something about that name. And as I said a couple of weeks ago, when we call on that name, God's presence, His power, and His authority meets you. And that inside of that name is everything that God is, which means that anything and everything you need is resident within the name. There is something about that name. And God is faithful. God is faithful to give you what you need. Sister Mandy, everything is in Jesus. Everything you need is in Jesus. Christy, everything is in that name. Everything is in that name. North Cities, everything is in that name. The power to walk through the situation that you're in is in that name. The grace that you need to do what God has called you to do is in that name. And the miraculous is in that name. So let us take a moment, let us lift our hands, and let's call on that name. Jesus, Jesus, we call on your name, trusting you to give what we all need. Savior, that grace, that strength, wisdom is in that name. and the anxieties. We lay down the burdens and the worries and the questions so that our hands are free to receive the gifts that you're giving us. God, to receive what it is you're doing in us. We receive it. We receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name.
Let's thank the Lord for what he's doing. And let's thank him for the life that we have now because he has come. Lord, we thank you. God, and we receive what you're doing. We receive what you're doing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, church, let's just thank the Lord for what he's doing right now. Lord, I bless you, and I thank you for your loyalty and your faithfulness. That you're so good, and that in your goodness you would come and be with us. That you would purchase life for us so that we may live. So that now we may be that light that goes out in the world, reflecting you and showing the world what it looks like when the kingdom has come. And when your signs and your wonders accompany us, God, as we're witnessing to you and the life that you've given. And we thank you for it, Savior. We thank you for it. And church, now in light of that thankfulness that we feel, let us bring our prayer request and our needs to the Lord. Lord, you see every need and you see every request that's been made mention. And Lord, we say, first of all, that may you be glorified and may you be magnified in our lives as you are moving in our lives, as you are working together everything for good. Lord, as you're doing a gospel work in us, may you be glorified. Lord, we trust you to do what you feel is right, what you feel is wise, and what you feel is best. And we receive the gifts. God, the grace and the strength, the healing, the virtue. God, receiving a nearness of your presence and of your love. And Lord, I pray for your hand to stretch forth, to touch and to minister the hearts and the minds and the lives of your people. So that as they go forth this Christmas season, Lord, that they go into the world that you have redeemed and rescued shining forth your light better and clearer than before. And as a result, people would come to know you. And as a result, people would be brought into your kingdom. And may your signs and your wonders follow your people, I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. First of all, I want to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We are honored that you have come and worship with us today. And if you're a guest and you're noticing something different and you're wanting to know more about what you're feeling and sensing, then please come meet us at the end of service, just outside of these double doors and to the table to your right. You'll see somebody from the staff there who will help facilitate and answer your questions and will allow us the opportunity to serve you as you're connecting to God, others, and his purpose. So we are in the midst of our King Jesus series, and I want to remind you all that there is no midweek this week on the 27th. We are suspending our services, and we will resume services again next Sunday, January 31st, and again, we will only have one service, and that's at 10 a.m., so no 9 a.m. service, no 11 a.m. service, just the one 10 a.m. service. And as for our January schedule, we have our welcome gathering January the 7th, End Time Prophecy Conference is January 13th and 14th at 6 p.m. here in this room. Purpose Institute kicks off January 19th through the 20th. You can enroll now at northcities.org forward slash PI. And we have our Under the Big Top for Kids January the 26th through the 28th. So we have a lot going on in January. And if you cannot remember everything, please go to our website and our calendar. Everything will be listed there. And now if the ushers would please come forward, we're going to take our tithes and offering. And... This is an act of worship. Like everything we do here, it's worship. And it's only right for us to give back to the Lord out of grateful hearts because he's been so good and he has given so much. So there are three ways in which you can give. You can drop your envelope in the bags as they come across. You can drop your envelope in the giving box or you can give online. So let us continue 
to worship in our giving and also in song. how wonderful it was the night that Jesus came to earth. If you remember in our previous reading, the shepherds were not quiet about what they saw. What happened to them left a profound impact, and they helped spread the news of Jesus' birth far and wide, so much so that wise men came asking King Herod for news of where the promised child was born. The king may have ignored the clamorings of peasant folk, but his attention was raised when these learned men also sought the king of the Jews. Herod asks his chief priests and scribes to consult scripture, and they reveal that a king will be born in Bethlehem. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 9 reads this. When they heard the king, they departed and be holy. The star which they had seen in the east went before them. Still it came and stood over where the young child was when they saw the star. 
they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and more. When the wise men see Jesus, there is no hesitation in their response. They worship him and bestow kingly riches upon the child. These special gifts represent the all-encompassing power of the Messiah. Gold is a precious metal used throughout antiquity to honor kings. Frankincense is a valuable incense used by the priests throughout the Old Testament as an offering and prayer to God in the temple. And myrrh was a spice mixed into the oil that anointed the prophets of God. These wise men recognized from his birth that Jesus is our prophet, the one who brings God's word to the people. He is our priest, the one who atones for our sins, and he is our king, the one who reigns forever. Lowly shepherds rejoice and wise men worship. These examples predicate our response to Jesus. Let us have joy and let us shower him with our praise and give glory to the everlasting king.
boldly declare to this beautiful congregation this morning that not only shall he reign, but he is reigning. His spirit, his authority, he is reigning in an amazing way here in this house. Early this morning, the Lord began to unveil some powerful direction to me for this service. And so I'm not, I'm not surprised by the way that the Spirit is flowing. And so I know that it's, it's easy for us in the holiday season to get our minds on what's under the tree or what am I getting this year. But could it be that God's Spirit is saying to North Cities, really what are you looking for? What are you expecting? Just as God so powerfully said to us last Sunday, God is with us. But God is telling North Cities, not only am I with you, but I am in you. And what God is wanting us to understand in this hour, that God wants to shine so brightly through us. Brother Jimmy, I'm convinced this is the church's finest hour. You hear me say it often, but I'm convinced God did not let a gentleman all the way from Africa stand in this podium last Sunday and just by happen chance share with us some of the powerful things that we have been seeing in the spirit realm, that we've been hearing in the prayer room. But God wanted me to tell North Cities, God's power is upon us. The light of the gospel is shining radiantly bright all around us. And Jesus is reminding us this Christmas season that I am at work. He is at work. The Lord told me to tell several people in this room this morning that God is going to unveil and un amaze you with some amazing things this year. Sister Judy Horton, the Lord told me to tell you that 2024, some of the most amazing things will unfold in your life, Sister Judy. Amazing things are going to unfold. Things that you have been specifically praying for, God is going to astound you with his blessings and with his provision. I understand North Cities, it is it's Christmas Sunday, but North Cities is a spirit-led church. This is a, a church that desires whatever it is that he wants to unveil unto us. And the spirit is wanting to unveil unto us today that there's some things at our fingertips. And God is saying, grab a hold of it, North Cities. The fire of the Holy Ghost is here in us. And the Holy Ghost is all around us. I know it's my family. Heather, the Lord told me to tell you and Andrew, when Andrew yielded to the leading of the Spirit, that wasn't by accident. They're just confirmation that God has chosen you and Andrew. That God has prepared you for this season. God is saying, quit staggering at my promises and trust the majestic plan that He has prepared for you. The Lord has shown me for North Cities 
God is raising up a generation of young adults and young leaders here at North Cities. 2024, hear me, North Cities, we will be astounded of what amazing things God is birthing and what God is going to birth today. God showed me that there would be deliverance that would crown the service. There would be physical healings and spiritual deliverance. There are people that walked into this room today more than having something that you can just walk out of here temporarily with. God wanted you to know this, is that I am here to deliver you. There are addictions that walked into this room today that God is going to break those shackles and you will walk out of this room delivered by the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. Heather and Andrew, hold fast. Hold fast. Johnny Kelsey, God has raised you up for the season. You have been centered on target and on purpose. The enemy has tried to sabotage way too long, but God said, I have chosen the two of you for this season. God has raised this couple up to help lead this congregation in an amazing way. And I'm confident that God is going to continue to exalt and people all around you will be astounded of the miraculous wisdom and revelation that God has crowned the two of you with. Be, be bold, be courageous, and know that God has set it into motion and nothing can stop it. Renee and Carla Flores, hear me clearly. God has put resources into your hands. And the resources that God has put into your hands is going to help fuel the remodeling, the expansion, and the revival that God has called North Cities to bring into this metroplex. As that man stood in the pulpit, Bishop and the guest minister, saying and prophesying that resources are coming to us and it's going to be placed into our hands that we can do what God has called us to do. Be bold. Renee and Carla, keep walking in faith. Keep trusting the plan. Keep simply saying, God, here I am. Use me. Use me for your glory. Use me for your testimony. And I will do what you've called me to do. Christian, the Lord showed me this morning, you and Cindy, God has chosen the two of you to help lead North Cities. And God's giftings are going to grow and be multiplied as you simply walk in obedience. I've watched you, young man, and God has trusted you, and God has gifted you. So just keep your eyes on the prize, son, and know this, that you're in the center of his will, and God will exalt you in dimensions and measures that will astound you, Brother Christian. Sister Sandy, just keep trusting. Keep believing. This is, this is our hour. This is our moment. This is what God has, if I can use the word destined, God, just as God chose the nation of Israel, and we may get to it here in a moment and read about it, but just as God chose that nation and they walked through struggle after struggle, there was a purpose that God had upon them. Just as God had a purpose upon the nation of Israel, God has a purpose upon North Cities. And the purpose that God has upon us, nothing, nothing, nothing can abort it. Nothing can stop it because God has chosen us for this hour. Kevin and Alyssa, you have been chosen for this season. The beautiful truth, Alyssa, that you are embracing, the beautiful revelation of who God manifested in the flesh, the Jesus that we're singing about, that's why God is going to usher the two of you into a dimension that will astound you, not because of our perfectness, your perfectness, but because you simply said, here am I. I surrender, I yield. 
know the powerful steps that both of you guys are taking. It's the perfect will of God. And God will astound everyone around you. Brother Kevin, some of the things that God spoke recently that's going to unfold in 2024. And people will be astounded of the amazing, miraculous miracles that only Jesus can do. And all will take note that it is Jesus and Jesus alone. Let's give him thanksgiving for the great things that he has promised unto us. The Lord told me to tell, and I know time would not permit me to call everyone that the Lord has been showing me, but hear me when I say this, North Cities. There is so many beautiful disciples here in this congregation that you are aligning yourself to the voice of God. You are finding that place of prayer. You are building you an altar daily. And hear me clearly. The fire that is going to fall upon North Cities and is following. The only way it will fall and continue to fall. And I will not say in it until Jesus either raptures me or takes me out of here prior to the rapture. But you hear me saying it. I said it all 2023. There's three things that God has called this congregation to. The first one is prayer. The second one is prayer. And the third one is prayer. The only thing that will make North Cities unique is us being a people of prayer. I challenge this congregation. There is a prayer room that is available for all. And the only way that we will step into harmony with what God has called us unto, we're going to have to humble ourselves. We're going to have to submit. The spirit for this service is God is our deliverer. The passage that I was going to read to you Simply talking about this. Israel had a season where they sat in darkness. But when they saw this great light, that great light began to transform. And the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell some of you that are here this morning, you have sat in darkness way too long. The light of the gospel is all around you. The light of Jesus is all around you. And more important than us getting to a big fancy meal today and opening up a bunch of gifts, this is the most important thing that we can ever do, church. The most important thing, the greatest gift is right in front of you and me. But are you content to walk in darkness or are you going to respond to the light and are you willing to walk in the light as he's in the light? And the only way that we can walk in the light as he's in the light is through fellowship every day. Just as God raised up Gideon, God is raising up countless Gideons here in North Cities. Just as Gideon faced the Midian army, it was way bigger than one man. And what we are facing, the only way that we're going to transition into 2024 and see the miraculous is we're going to have to do the same thing that Gideon did, trust God. And as we trust God, note this, the very first thing that Gideon instructed those, those people that was with him, they let the light shine first. The very first thing, they broke the pictures and the light shined. Before they made a bunch of noise, they let the light shine. We cannot make a bunch of noise until light shines through us. But the Spirit is saying today, let the light of the gospel shine through you. Let the light of the season shine through you. And if we will let the light of the gospel shine through, God will do 
the miraculous, and God will do amazing things. I prophesy to this church, miracle after miracle is going to fill this place. Miracle after miracle, Brother Carey. Two specific miracles that recently transpired, and so many amazing miracles are happening in North Cities. Brother Gary's wife, recently Gary K, not Gary Barnhart, Gary K's wife went into surgery recently to remove some cancer, and she got the report that all the cancer is gone. And God has once again showed the power of his name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Sister Linda recently went in for a procedure with her heart, thinking that she was going to have to have a pacemaker, maybe have some bypasses, whatever, done to her heart. But she is here this morning testifying that there was no issues with her heart. God healed it. And God did one more miracle. One more miracle. This is happening nonstop here at North Cities. Miracle after miracle is unfolding. Brother Jerry shared with me his father several years ago received two life sentences. But the governor very recently granted him a pardon and he is fixing to get out of prison. And I believe step into the ultimate ministry that God has called him unto. This is, this is what Jesus wants to do. What I'd like to do for the remainder of the service you stand with me all across this sanctuary. I know that God prepared this service this morning specifically to put into your possession the greatest gift and gifts that you could ever get. I'm opening this altar area up. If you walked into this room, and please understand me, it's okay to acknowledge you have a need of Jesus. I boldly acknowledge to you this morning, my need of Jesus is huge. I stand before you not perfect. If you want to know how imperfect I am, go talk to a little lady over here by the name of Nancy, and she'll share with you how, how broken I am. But Jesus didn't choose me because of my perfectness. Jesus chose me because I said, Jesus, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it to the best of my ability. So I stand before you this morning in obedience to what God wanted me to do for this Sunday morning service. And so if you need deliverance in your life, take a step of faith. We open these altar areas up. If you need a physical healing in your life, I open this altar area up. That's what... Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Jesus went all throughout Galilee, healing all manner of diseases. And Jesus is here this morning to heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. That's what he desires to do in this room. So those of you that operate in the gift of faith, I invite you, begin to make your way. Let's feel this room for a few more moments of praise and adoration to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let us pray for a few more moments this morning.